Okay, uh, I wanted to, before we get going today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the homework assignment that was due on Wednesday, which I graded. And I just wanted to talk briefly about Mr. Tom Cotton, because I got, I got a lot of interesting answers to this question. Um, now, as I said in the little footnote, I don't know who, who read my footnote, uh, that this answer, your answer to this question may involve in some way your own uh, political opinions. And so I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to grade your personal um, beliefs or whatever. Um, so f for people's answers in this one, generally uh, I gave everybody full credit. I feel badly marking down just because I disagree with you about certain things. But I did take off points for people who are saying things that are just plain false. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about that because there were some things that, uh, well, I think it's interesting to talk about anyway and to think about, but uh, there were some things which I think were misconceptions that, that people had. Anyway, um, I hope you remember this, the, uh, the scenario here. This is about the, uh, the election in Alaska, which happened about a month ago. And Tom Cotton, who is a senator, uh, yeah, Republican senator from Arkansas said, first of all, he said, ranked choice voting is a scam to rig elections. This is not true. It's not a, a, it's not a scam. I mean, at least not mathematically. You might think it is some kind of political game that people are playing, but as a mathematical system, there's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it per se, um, and it doesn't rig the elections. This is the more interesting comment that he made, and you can see actually he was not, these comments were not well received on the Twitter. This was, this was a, this was a tweet. The, um, the ratio is not great here. I mean, he, I guess he has more likes than comments, although this is a lot of comments, which generally indicates a bunch of like angry trolls um, who don't like what you're saying. Uh, doesn't mean he's wrong, but anyway, 60% uh, of Alaska voters voted for Republican, but thanks to a convoluted process and ballot exhaustion, which disenfranchises voters, a Democrat won. So um, the first question, the first part of this on the Homer problem was, is, um, is he really correct about the 60% number? Did, is it true that 60% of people voted uh, for a Republican in the top? And this is just a, a mathematical question. The answer is yes, it really is true. If you do the math on the, uh, on the votes here, if you look at, these were, these were the votes. And then if you just count up how many people put either S or N on top versus how many people put M on top, it is 60% of the people put um, one of the Republicans as their first choice and only about 40% put the Democrat. So he's correct about that. Is this really a problem though? Like that's the, um, he is objecting to that. Uh, apparently Tom Cotton believes if 60% of the people put a Republican on top of the ballot, then a Republican should have won because 60% of the people wanted a Republican to win. Um, and uh, many of you on your homework uh, response said, like this, this is basically part B. Is, is Cotton right that this is an issue? And a lot of you said, Yes, I agree. If 60% of people voted for a Republican on the top, then a Republican should have won. And um, I actually disagree. I, di I didn't mark you wrong for saying that um, because it's, I mean, at least, at least one senator agrees with you. But it, it, I think it's a little more complicated than that. And I'm not, I'm not trying to um, change your mind necessarily. But I feel like um, Tom Cotton, as a Republican senator, you can't blame him. But I think that he is viewing this thing strictly through the lens of the two parties as a partisan um, observer. If every election, in your opinion, is about Democrats versus Republicans, then it is a problem if 60% of your voters wanted a Republican, but you got a Democrat. That, that really is a problem if the election is just about Democrats versus Republicans. But uh, I would say my response to Mr. Mr. Cotton if you were here with us today, I would say um, these people, th this in my opinion is not a great way to look at the, this election in particular because these people were voting for people, not for parties. And you can see this, like if I look at this column right here, these people here were very important when it comes to the ranked choice. They voted for uh, N on top, who's a Republican, M in the middle, who's a Democrat, and then S on the bottom, who's a Republican. You can tell, at least for these people very specifically, these people were not seeing this as just Republicans versus Democrats because they liked the Republican best, a Democrat second best, and another Republican 
third best, all right? This, apparently this, Tom Cotton, I guess, would say this, these people are, are idiots or they don't know what they're doing because they put it, why would you put a Republican on top and then a Democrat and then another Republican? I think the answer is these people, for whatever reason, they are thinking of these three candidates as individuals, not as just representatives of either the Democrats or the Republicans. I would say this is kind of like, um, here's another, another fact about this election. Uh, this candidate, M. Mary Peltola, is, uh, I believe, an Alaska native, like an indigenous Alaskan. And I think she's the first Alaskan native to, to be elected to the Congress. But anyway, the other two, uh, Nick and Sarah, are, are white folk, all right? No offense to the white folk. I'm a white folk myself. Um, if you look at this election and say, this election is ridiculous because 60% of the voters uh, voted for a white person in the top position, but um, a non-white person ended up winning. That's not fair. 60% of the people wanted a white person, but we got, we got someone who's not a white person. The obvious response to this question is they weren't voting for them because they were white people. They were voting for them because of whoever they were, right? We don't just elect, uh, we don't elect a white person because 60% of people wanted a white person, right? And I think this is how I see Tom Cotton's com comments. If, yes, if you are fixated at all times on the parties, Republicans versus Democrat, then it makes sense what he's saying. But uh, to me, that's not, um, well, that's certainly not how I evaluate candidates when I decide who to vote for, because I'm not a partisan. And it's also not, apparently not how these people actually feel in in uh, in Alaska, anyone have any thoughts about that? Yeah, what does color have to do? Well, the thing is, color has nothing to do with it. Uh, so it's not appropriate to say, "Oh, this is ridiculous," because sixty percent of the people voted for a white person, but the other person won. That's a that's yeah, a stupid I, I, objection, yeah, right? Right. I don't see it in that. Way. All right. So, but it's the same as this. What he's saying is. And I think it makes sense to him to say that because he does view the whole thing in terms of Democrats versus Republicans. Yeah, even what does that have to do with color? I just don't understand the, the correlation to color. I mean, I, I was inventing a hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but I know. But I just don't understand it. I don't understand where he, even the idea comes from of why white versus non white. And what does it have to do with the election? It doesn't have to do with, it, with the election at all. I, I was trying to say, to object in this way, about 60% voted for a Republican, but the Democrat won, you might as well say 60% voted for a white person, but the, the person of color won. Or 60% voted, for, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe two of them were taller than the other one. And you say, oh, most people voted for the tall ones. Why didn't the tall one win? Well, it's because nobody cares about who's the tall one, right? Okay. Now, in real life, yes, people do care about who's a Republican and who's a Democrat. But I'm, I'm just saying that's, that's not always a helpful way to analyze the way things went. And especially if you're making a claim that somehow this represents a, a failure of democracy or that the, the election was rigged or scammed or something. That to me, that is a high bar. You need a lot, of, um, a lot to back up a claim like that. There's a big difference in the values between the Republicans and the Democrats. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not saying... Different. I'm not saying yeah. nobody should care about the difference between Republicans and Democrats. Um, yeah. Anyway, these are my thoughts. Anyone else have thoughts about this? Yeah. It's just like getting mad, like the Democratic Party felt like you should be getting mad at the people who voted. Like, like you're saying, like, I guess you could say hypothetically, uh, independent voters, like N and the N and the S. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, then get mad at the people who did that. Yeah, just, right. Like, Right. Yeah. 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 Like if, if everybody was voting for their parties, then nobody should have voted in this way, really. And if, if he wants to be mad at, I mean, he can be mad at the system for allowing people to vote in this way, but it was really those people who made it happen that way. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, the part C, I said, what if the plurality system had been used instead? The, the point of my question, maybe I didn't phrase the question. Uh, so great, but like, presumably Cotton is saying that ranked choice is a bogus system and we should have just used plurality instead, just because that's the other option that 
that people are used to in America. But if you look at this election, if they did use the plurality instead, then the, then the M would have won anyway. Uh, so there's, uh, for him to be complaining about ranked choice, in my opinion, is a little weird just because, okay, even if you didn't use ranked choice, you still would have lost anyway. Um, uh, I think there is, to, to say something uh, in, in Cotton's favor, I think what I just said is a little simplistic. If they were really using plurality, then of course people would not have voted in the same way because you can't, you can't do votes like this and maybe if they were using plurality, maybe these N voters would have decided to vote for uh, Sarah Palin just because they thought that the N couldn't win. Or one of those candidates would have dropped out before the election happened because in a plurality election, two candidates in the same party will, will ruin each other's uh, chances. So uh, there is a big difference between what if they had used plurality instead, but there's certainly no real evidence that it would have gone any differently. Uh, Cotton is railing against the ranked choice system, even though in this example, the plurality system probably would have had the same result anyway. It's not like, um, it's not like the M lost in the first round and then won later on, but they, they were winning all along. All right, and then the last one actually, this is the one that I, um, I read most carefully in, in your answers. Most of the answers, I just, just because I didn't want to uh, take forever reading, I sort of skimmed over people's answers for ABC and I, and I looked in detail at, at your answers for part D, uh, just I picked that out at random. Ballot exhaustion, remember, is the one where these people who voted only for N, um, after N lost in the first round, those votes got thrown away, and they did not count for anything in the second round because their only candidate here was eliminated. I saw some people say, like, yes, this absolutely is unfair. You should never throw away somebody's vote uh, because everybody's vote needs to count. That's the point of democracy. Um, I think that this is just a, a, a misinterpretation of how the system works. These people who voted for N and nobody else, their vote did count in the first round their guy lost, and then somebody else won in the second round, all right? This is kind of like, um, you know, in the, in, um, in the uh, I don't know, in, in the, say, Trump versus Clinton election. I voted for Clinton. This is a true fact. I voted for Clinton. She lost. Does that mean my vote didn't count for anything? Well, I mean, kind of in a moral sense, you might say it, it didn't matter that I voted because my, my guy lost. But like mathematically speaking and democratically speaking, my vote still counted. It's just the other person won. It's the same situation here. This throwing these votes away after the first round does not mean that they didn't matter or they didn't count. They did count in the first round, but you lost. This is how the system works. Um, some people said that this is uh, the whole ranked choice setup is kind of a scam to trick people into voting for only one person so that you can throw their votes away. Or maybe I got the sense that some people thought maybe just the rules said whoever voted for only one person, their vote just doesn't count because that's like an illegal vote. That's not how it works. You are allowed to vote for only one person. And everybody who votes for only one person knows if that person loses, they're going to throw your vote out for the second round. That's just how the system works. Um, and I would say, so my, my response to this, um, Cotton says that this, this disenfranchises voters, like it unfairly or undemocratically prevents people's votes from being counted. My, my opinion is this is, not, this is not unfair at all. The people who vote that way, they know that this vote might only count in the first round and then get thrown away after the first round if their guy loses. And that's exactly how it works. Um, this is, uh, I don't know, to me this is not unfair at all. It's not. Um, it's not disregarding those votes. They counted in the first round, and then they don't count in the second round. That's just how the rounds work. What, right? can't you, could you vote for your one candidate in all, in all categories? In every round? Yeah. No. Why can you vote for A, 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 you know, whatever? That doesn't, the way that yeah. the, the way the system works is somebody gets eliminated each round, so. Yeah, but I mean in first, second, and third. It doesn't make sense. I mean, if, yeah. if in you... In other words, instead of voting for candidate A, candidate B, candidate yeah. C, and first, second, and third... What, what if I say A, A, A? I only want A. You know, in this is exactly what... Yeah, this is exactly how it works. Okay. And then okay. yeah, after after round one, if A is eliminated, eliminated. A is eliminated. Okay. And you're... It's totally eliminated, yeah. 
Yeah. It doesn't make sense to say, yeah, I know A was eliminated, but I still want to vote for them in the second round. That, it, that's not how it works. Um, I think, so there is one sense in which this may be like undemocratically unfair, disenfranchising. If for, if for some reason these people who voted say just with the N on top, if these people didn't understand how the system worked, or if, if, they, were, if they were lied to, or if somebody, um, maybe they thought that they were doing just an ordinary plurality election, maybe they didn't realize that they can vote, they can rank their second and third choice. If that's the case, then this is really a problem. If, um, if somehow you, you convinced all of your opponents never to rank their second choice, because that means you get to throw their votes away. That, that is a real uh, problem with, with democracy. But I don't, uh, there, no one has made that suggestion that that happened in this particular election. Any thoughts about that? I felt like, um, like I said before, I'm, I'm not gonna uh, take off points for you because you, you have a, uh, an opinion which is, which, because you disagree uh, as a matter of opinion with me, but I felt like a lot of people were, were maybe misinformed about just how the, how the system works. I don't know, is what I'm saying sound wrong? You don't have to argue with me, but yeah. Um, no, I think a lot of people probably don't understand the process, and therefore, if more people knew that their vote was going to be thrown out, that they would have thought ahead of this to other candidates. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what, what the mentality is for someone who voted like this. Maybe they don't understand, and that's why they did it. But even so, it's not like a. It's kind of, I, I feel like if, if they're running an election, say running for president, um, and for me, my choices are I could vote for my mom or Hitler or Satan. Um, I'm just gonna put my mom and walk away. Like, because I, I feel at a certain level, like I don't even want my vote ever to count if my mom win, uh, loses. Oh uh, yeah, put me down for Satan, right? Like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I just put my mom and if my mom loses, then I'm out, you know? I don't, wanna, I don't want my vote to go count for Hitler or Satan in the second round, right? Maybe that's what these people were thinking. I don't know. The I think- The optics are bad. Yeah, right. They're really bad. Yeah, it's I don't wanna tell my kids. Like three card Monty, it's like, okay. Follow this one, no, no, let's lift up, no. That's where, that's where the, the optics are. You mean this, this, of this whole system? This voting system. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, it seems like three card bonds. It's very similar in the way that it's structured. Excuse me, let's move this. Follow this one. Nope, there. I don't know. To me, it makes a lot of sense to say, yeah, I like this one the best. If it doesn't work out for this one, I like this one and then this one. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, weir it's, it's weird if all you've ever known is the plurality system. Tom Cotton says it's 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 a convoluted process. I don't know if it's if it's a little complicated. I wouldn't say. Yeah. I feel like for this kind of uh, voting system, granted you know what you're doing and you know how it works, it sort of forces you to respect all the candidates, like for for no matter what they are, because it forces you to sort of put them in your head as this kind of like setup. Mm -hmm. Instead of having it being like two separate parties, you have to you have to think about yeah yeah each right represents. you have to think a little harder and I think actually this is maybe the reason why some uh, actually some people um, suggested this rank choice will only be fair if everybody has to rank everybody you you should you should force people to rank all of them so that to just to make sure that nobody's vote gets thrown out I think as a practical matter though like I know you know if you've ever voted for president you see like the two main candidates and then there's like five or six other people on there who I've never heard of um, to force me as a voter to decide the, the precise order in which I, I like these other five guys who I've never heard of. I would say like, come on, I'm just gonna, if you force me to put them in some order, I'm just gonna write a, some random order. But if every voter in the country is writing some random order, then you get a whole bunch of random nonsense as part of your uh, election data, which is not, not really uh, good. I, I, I heard like, actually opposite opinion. Some people said you, you should make everybody vote for all three just so that you don't throw away any votes. But then I also heard people say um, you can't force somebody to, to put down more people than they want to, right? It, I mean, we don't force people to vote in the first place. Like, if anything, these people voted for N, uh, N didn't make it to the second round. After that point, it's as if they just didn't vote. And that's okay too, like that's not disenfranchisement if someone just decides to vote in a particular way. These are my opinions.
Another comment? I saw a hand, which I, I was in. Um, do you know how many states actually do like Yeah, right now, I believe it's just Alaska and the great state of Maine. I think that's, I think that's the case. Although it's been, there are many states in which there are serious movements to, to change to this system. I think Tom Cotton is against it. That's, that's what I get, gather. All right. Great. Thank you for the lively discussion. I, I, hope that, um, I, I hope that you don't feel I am speaking out of place by disagreeing with the senator from Arkansas. Yeah, everybody else uses plurality. Nobody uses Borda or, or anything else. Yeah. Arkansas, yeah. Then, Isn't that what I just said? Then why is he complaining about that? Because the Democrat won, and he wanted the Republicans to win. Yeah, he, Tom, uh, he's from Arkansas, but he's one of these guys who is always talking about sort of national level issues. Um, yeah. Which is fine. He can talk about whatever he wants. All right, great. Let's, uh, let's continue then. Oh, this is this is my reminder to send me your uh, grade percentages. Um, so I want to pick up where we were last time, talking about different criteria for judging how good uh, one of these voting systems are. And we have uh, so far we've discussed three different criteria. If anybody wants to tell me why rank choice is bogus, this is an answer I can get behind. The rank choice does not satisfy the Condorcet winner criterion. Actually, this is what Tom Cotton should have said. I meant to say this before, sorry. If you look at the votes, I'm going back to, going back to here. I'm just obsessed with this guy. He's living rent free in my head. If you look at these votes, I believe it's true that um, if you just add up the numbers, if you pairwise compare M versus N, uh, N wins. This is the slam dunk argument that Tom Cotton should have been tweeting about. He should have said, if you ask people in Alaska, more than half of them like N better than M, so M should not have won. That is something I can totally respect that argument, right? Now, it's a fact the people of Alaska chose to use the rank choice system, and the rank choice system works in a certain way, and M was the winner. So you, you can't really say, I mean, you don't get to take that back. But if you want to say rank choice failed the people in this case, um, this is the reason, this is a, a good argument. I would say this is absolutely a, uh, a valid objection um, to the way that this, this went down. Anyway, that, that's, that's what the Condorcet criterion is about. It says sometimes the um, rank choice winner is different from the Condorcet winner, right? That's what this X here means. Although that same analysis can be applied to the plurality, the, the plurality, this also can happen when you're using the plurality system and also with the Borda. It does not with the Condorcet system. Uh, and I hope you remember the majority criterion. This means if all voters put somebody, say X in the, not all, if a majority of voters put X in the top position, then X should win the election. And the unanimity says if all voters unanimously put X above Y, then Y should not be the winner, all right? So that, that is what we talked about last time. Today, we are gonna have two more criteria that is across the top, and one more voting system. So I'm gonna add on one more row to this thing and two more columns if we get that far. Let's, let's see how we do. So the first one is a, another criterion with a very fancy name. It is called mono, monotonicity. Monotonicity is the next thing I want to talk about. This is an awesome word, and I'm glad that the, uh, the campus tour was walking by as I said the word monotonicity, which makes it sound very fancy what we're talking about here. It is a little fancy, actually. Monotonicity is quite a bit more complicated than the other ones that we've been talking about so far. But anyway, that's gonna be my next, would you mind if I just say mono there? 
That's my next column in the, uh, in the chart. Monotonicity. Let's talk about this. So this has to do with, um, I'll explain the, the, the word, the complicated word uh, once we get into this. But this is about, actually both of the, the new criteria that we're going to talk about today are, are about um, what happens when people change their minds. Of course, in a real election, you're not allowed to change your mind after you vote, but you'll, you'll see why this is relevant. What happens when people change their minds? By the way, did you all watch the new Star Wars series? I know you're all big Star Wars fans. It's pretty good. They released the first three episodes all at once. I think because the first two, like nothing happens, it doesn't really get going until the third one. I liked it though. Um, this is about what happens when people change their mind in a very specific way. So here's the way that I'm, that I'm considering. Like if I was, let's say I was going to put um, X on top of my ballot, like in the first position, but then I change my mind and put, uh, let's say, Y on top. All right? This is not a very complicated scenario. I'm thinking about it. I, w I thought maybe I was going to vote for X in my top position, but then, uh, I don't know, something, they have a debate or something. I change my mind and I decide, uh, you know what, I'm going to put Y in the top position. This change that I made, this, this little change of my mind, this should help, you want to fill in the blank? Which candidate should this help? This is not a trick question. Why is the answer. This should help, why? Because I wasn't gonna put them in the top, but I changed my mind, you know, if I was ranking my choices, I guess apparently I had why further down my list, but I decided, you know what, I'm gonna push them up there. This should help why, all right? This is the basic idea behind the monotonicity. That is, if you are going to raise somebody up in your rankings, that should help that one that you raised up, all right? This is, a, in my opinion, a very kind of obvious uh, thing that you want to be true in any of these voting systems. They should obey this basic property. I'm here to tell you, actually, not all of them do behave in this way. So here is a fairly strange example. Um, let's, I'll go to the new page here. Here's a specific example. Let's say five people said A, B, C. Four people said C, B, A. Three people said B, C, A. And one person said B, A, C. All right. Now, if I do, I don't, I don't think we need to watch me do all the math here, but if we do uh, the Borda, the scores, I will just tell you what they are. You could check, your, you could check this if you really want to. Uh, if I add up the points, I got A, get, A gets 11, B gets 17, and C also gets 11, and so B wins. All right. And now I'm going to imagine what if I change some of the votes. Actually, I'm only going to change. Uh, I'm going to change one of these columns. So doing the border, these are the scores you get. All right. And B is the winner. What if. What if I. Sorry. change the CBAs to BCA. This change, if you pay attention to who's who in here, B was the original winner, right? And this change, I'm suggesting, will just raise the winner up on some of the ballots, all right? And I ask you, who will be the winner after you make this change using the Borda? I don't even think you have to add up all the numbers. If B was the winner using the border here, and then I raise them up, 
Um, is B still the winner? Or did somebody else somehow win? Everyone's saying, yes, B is still the winner. Can anyone explain why? Yeah, yeah, right. If you just think about the points, this gives B more points. It gives C less points. So if B was the winner before, and, and the points for A doesn't change. So if B was the winner before, you just gave them some more points. You didn't give anybody else any more points, so they're still going to be the winner. All right, so what if I change here? I will say B still wins. Can I say why? B gets more points. And uh, C gets less. So I, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are going to end up being. You could figure it out if you wanted to. But B is going to have even more than they did before. C will have even less and A doesn't, doesn't change. So B is still going to be the winner. All right. This makes complete sense, right? This is kind of how it should work. If B was going to be the winner, but then you move them up, then they should still be the winner, right? Okay. But check it out. I'm going to do the same example though. I want to think about the same example using the ranked choice. So if I have this, let's do now with um, ranked choice voting. Something totally crazy happens here. So in the round one, uh, remember how the ranked choice works? You just count up in the votes in the top position for A, B, and C. I see A has five. C has four, and B here also has four. So this is five for A, four for B, four for C, all right? So who gets eliminated? B and C. Yeah, B and C. This is a case where we have a tie for last place, and remember the rule in the ranked choice, if there's a, if there's a tie, this never happens in the real world because you don't get exact ties in the real world, but if there is a tie, you just eliminate both of them. So B and C are both eliminated, and we don't even have to do the second round. A wins, right? All right, that's what happens without making the change, okay? Now I'm gonna say change, um, now I'm gonna make a, a slightly different change and I'll say why. I'm gonna change the BAC, which is the, the, the one on the very end, to ABC, all right? Again, what, there's, a, there's a particular language that I'm, that I'm gonna to use to describe a change like this. Here, A was the original winner and I moved them up, all right? So this, um, the, the phraseology I'm going to use to describe this kind of change, this boosts the winner. Because the winner, using the rank choice, was A. And this change that I'm proposing is just moving the winner up higher. All right? And let's see, what effect does this have on the election? So now, I'll just redraw draw the chart. It's uh, five people said... A, B, C, four said B, uh, C, B, A, three said B, C, A, and then that last one I'm going to change so that now it says A, B, C. It used to say B, A, C. All right? Anyway, we raised up the, the person who was going to win was A. We made it even better for A. Uh, what happens now for the rank choice? In round one, you get... It's actually going to be different this time, at least a little bit different. A now has six votes in the top position. B has three and C has four. So this is gonna say six, uh, what did I say? B has three, C has four, right? And so they don't both get eliminated at the same time, this time around. B is eliminated. And now I go to round two. After eliminating B, it looks like five said A, C. 4 said C, A, 3 said C, A, 1 said A, C. Check it out. A gets 6, C gets 7, and C wins. 
I said this was crazy. Does it seem crazy to you that that happened? What can someone explain? What's what's weird about that? Remember the winner originally? Yeah. Can you say? A was boosted up. Yeah, A was going to win, and then somebody changed their mind to put A even higher, and this change caused them to lose. This seems backwards, right? If you raise someone's up, then um, they should like win even harder, right? But but they didn't. Um, and in the Borda, it's true. If you raise up the winner, they do just win even harder because they just get more points. But because of the uh, weird way that the rounds work in the ranks choice, it is possible in the rank choice to raise somebody up in a way which causes them to lose. This is crazy, all right? Actually, this is, in, in my mind, this is one of the worst things about rank choice, is that this can happen. Because this is a totally weird, um, uh, very unexpected uh, and somehow unfair thing that can happen when you use the rank choice. So I'm going to try and summarize here. Here, we boosted the winner. But using the rank choice voting, this caused them to lose. All right. This is, in my mind, a a uh, a significant weakness of the rank choice. I know it sounds like I I love the rank choice because I talk about the rank choice all the time. Um, deep down inside my heart, I I actually don't truly love the rank choice. I think it's it's probably uh, better than plurality in the real world, but. Um, I'm not, I'm not totally sold on it because of you know, mathematical reasons like this. It is possible in the rank choice that you can boost up the winner and that change will actually cause that person to lose, all right? Another way of saying this, I mean, maybe this is, is a little too complicated, but I'll just say it this way. Of course, like I said before, in the real world, you don't get to change your vote, so that, there is no such thing as changing your ballot after the fact. But what it means is sometimes changing your mind to, uh, you know, vote for somebody will actually hurt them. All right. Anyone who wants to uh, say that ranked choice is a terrible system, they should say this because this, in my opinion, is a is a real objection. Um, sometimes changing your mind to vote for somebody will actually hurt them. Uh, what this this has very weird implications when it comes to campaigns. Like we take it for granted that the purpose of say a presidential campaign is to convince people to vote for you, right? But it turns out actually in the ranked choice system. Sometimes, by some weird, you know, numerical fluke, you can actually win because someone voted for somebody else, right? Or, or sometimes when they vote for you, that actually hurts you, all right? This is very strange. Um, I will say this, in terms of the real world, this kind of scenario is very unlikely to occur. This is a statistically unlikely, and I made up this example just so that it would happen. Uh, but it's still, it's a fact that this is possible using the ranked choice system. Uh, and this is very weird. So this is what the monotonicity criterion is all about. So I will write officially what it is. The monotonicity criterion. Uh, it says, if some voters change their mind, to boost the winner, in, in an ideal system, this should not change the result. If you boost the winner, they should still be the winner. So that's what I'm going to say here. If some voters change their mind to boost the winner, then the winner doesn't change. All right, this is the monotonicity criterion. And what we've discussed so far 
is uh, Borda and the rank choice. So when I'm going to put, you know, on my chart up there, I'm about to scroll up, but I won't scroll away since you're still writing. Borda does satisfy the monotonicity because if you boost somebody in the Borda, you're just giving them more points, and so they're still going to win. Uh, but ranked choice does not satisfy the monotonicity because, like I said, it is possible in some cases to boost up the person who is going to win in a way which makes them lose. All right. So I am going to scroll back up and put those in my chart. The monotonicity, uh, so rank choice does not satisfy. Borda does satisfy. All right. So in this, in this very specific sense, Borda is better than rank choice. Uh, although there are other reasons why you might want not want to use Borda, for instance, the majority criterion. But uh, in this sense, the Borda is definitely better than the rank choice. All right. Any questions about that so far? Yes. I would say, I mean, the, the Tom Cotton answer is ranked choice is a stupid, complicated, convoluted system. And if you make it that complicated, then some weird stuff is going to happen. Um, and I would say that's my stupid, my, my Tom Cotton answer. But I, I would say my own answer would be more or less like it is kind of mathematically complicated. And when you make the, the system kind of complicated, you can get some kind of weird things that happen. Uh, that's the best, uh, the best response I can get. Play complicated games, you get complicated answers. I don't know. Mess around and find out, that kind of thing. The, the system, I mean, the ranked choice is not that complicated, but it is complicated enough that weird things can happen in certain weird situations. All right. I will say again, this is not actually a common thing to happen in real life because it is statistically unlikely, but it is nevertheless a mathematically possible. All right. Uh, the word, just in case you're wondering, the word monotonicity, um, mathematically speaking, this word generally, this is actually used in other areas of mathematics, which is like, to me, this is a totally appropriate word in this context, although it, it's, it's a weird word to, uh, to ordinary people. Um, generally, the word monotonicity means something like the same direction, one direction maybe, things going the same way. Uh, like in ordinary language, monotone means kind of like something which has no variation to it or it's always, it always sounds the same. And the idea behind monotonicity in this, the, the reason the word is used is the idea is like, if I as a voter push somebody up, then in the results, they should also be pushed up, if anything. It, it should not be the case that I can push somebody up on my ballot which causes them to go down in the results. That, that's the opposite of monotonicity, because you have things going in, in opposite directions. Monotonicity means things moving in the same direction. All right, that's what that word uh, indicates. Okay, uh, let's try to talk, just because we had, we had two more spots on the, uh, on the chart there. Uh, plurality and the border. Let's talk about plurality and the monotonicity. Um, does the plurality system satisfy monotonicity? I'm going to try to write down a little argument. Actually, could we just, let's just try and think about it. Is the answer yes or no? The question is, in the plurality system, if there was somebody going to win, and then somebody changes their mind to move that person up higher on the ballot. Is that person still going to win? Or is there some weird thing can happen and makes them lose? What do you say? Yes, because the person just going to get more votes. Yeah, right. In the plurality system, if you raise somebody up, if anything, they're just going to get more votes when you count up the plurality votes. If you raise them all the way to the top, they'll get, they'll get extra votes. If you raise them but not all the way to the top, then, then it doesn't matter at all. Right? So this, uh, the answer here is yes. Now, if you were trying to explain this, it, this would make a, a nice, fairly uh, easy homework question. Just like the ones we were writing, little, little arguments like this last time, uh, this will go uh, in a similar way. So I'm going to start by saying something like, imagine, uh, say, x was the winner. And then I change ballots to boost 
x, all right? If you're talking about monotonicity, this is how you should always begin, and then sort of something, 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 and your conclusion is so x is still the winner. In my example, I'm saying using plurality. And then fill in the blank in the middle, probably will only take a sentence or so in, in typical case. How do you explain why is it that they will still win? Well, it's what he just said. If you raise somebody up in the plurality system, it just means they're going to get maybe some more votes. Or maybe, maybe if you don't raise them all the way to the top, they don't get any more votes. They certainly don't get any less, and so they're still going to win. So uh, I will try to write a, a sentence or two which says that. How about, um, boosting x, uh, how about, may give x more uh, first place rankings. You should probably mention first place rankings specifically because that's what the plurality system is all about, right? Boosting X may give X more first place rankings. It will not give anybody else any more, which means that X is still gonna be the winner, right? You possibly gave X even more and you didn't give anybody else anymore because all you did was raise X up. And so X is still the winner using plurality, right? This is how we explain why something does satisfy monotonicity. All right, anybody have any, anything to say about that? This is the monotonicity criterion, a little complicated. Um, okay, so up on my chart, I'm going to say yes for the plurality, right, in that column. This is the first time when I am forced to publicly admit the plurality is better than the rank choice in this, in this particular uh, judgment, right? In this sense, the plurality is definitely better than the rank choice. And if someone was asking me on a very informal level, why is it a check here and an X there? I would say, well, the plurality is just a lot simpler. And so you can't get weird effects happening in the plurality system. But the rank choice is a little more complicated and weird things can happen in the rank choice system. All right, uh, what about the condor say? I think I'm gonna leave this for you to think about on the homework. Um, does the condor say satisfy the monotonicity? You have to imagine. What if I'm using the condor say method and I, I have a winner and then I move them up on some of the ballots? Are they still going to be the winner after, after that change? All right, so think about that for the homework. All right. Great. Any, uh, this is all I want to say about monotonicity for now. And I said we were going to do two more criteria. I think actually we're not going to make it to the second one. But we will talk about one more voting system in our remaining 11 minutes. That's enough to time to talk about one more voting system. This voting system is uh, not very complicated at all. In fact, it's kind of stupid and you will feel like this is not even, this does not even count as a real voting system and it's too stupid to even talk about, but it, it is actually important. So another system, this system does exist in the real world. It is called dictatorship. Usually we don't think of dictatorship as a voting system because uh, the whole point of dictatorship is that you don't really vote. Um, although you probably know in, in, in countries which are actual dictatorships, they, most of these countries still claim to be democratic and they still have elections. It's just like a guy shoots you on your way out if you vote for, for someone other than the dictator. Like in North Korea, they have elections every so often and uh, you know the Kim family wins with 100% of the vote because uh, there's a guy looking over your shoulder when you're voting. Or maybe the ballot only has one, uh, one name and you just you check the name. They can even use rank choice. He's still going to win. There's only one choice. Uh, the dictatorship is what I want to talk about. So here's how, um, first of all, why would we even consider this as if it were a voting system? I'm, ta I'm talking about another voting system. The reason is because, as you all know this already in your mathematical career, you know that Mathematicians actually like to talk about sort of 
very stupid examples or things which don't even seem to mean anything. For example, mathematicians like to talk about the number zero because it is useful for many, many things. Like the number zero is, is very useful, even though it kind of represents nothing. And like in your real life, the, the number zero maybe is not all that important, but it's super important mathematically speaking. The dictatorship plays that same role in the theory of voting systems. So we can think of this as a voting system which basically everybody hates or like it's not democratic at all. So this is something which um, you can use this mathematically as to, to judge your other systems compared to the dictatorship. Like I say all, all uh, I say over and over that I don't really like the plurality. Well, at least it's better than a dictatorship. Um, and I agree, plurality system is better than a dictatorship. But if you really want to say that mathematically, you should talk about the dictatorship then. So this is, this is why we are talking about it. So this is kind of a stupid example, but it's an important example uh, nonetheless. So here I will describe to you how the method works. So the dictatorship as a voting method, here's how it works. Before the election, One of the voters is chosen to be the dictator. How do you choose the dictator? Well, because their daddy was the dictator, or maybe because they have more guns than everybody else. This, I leave it to, uh, to each society to choose their own dictator. But this is how it works. Before the election, one of the voters is chosen to be the dictator, and then how is the winner of the election determined? That's, that's what I have to describe to you when I'm describing this as a voting system. Um, the winner, uh, let me just say, the, uh, the first place choice of the dictator wins. That's how, this is how I'm gonna mathematically describe the dictator system as if it was a voting system. You can ask everybody to vote, but it doesn't matter what anybody says other than what the dictator says. And their, their top choice wins the election, no matter what anybody else said. All right, this is the dictatorship system. Um, all right, so we can ask, the, the purpose of talking about this is we can ask which of these criteria up on the, on the chart here is satisfied by the dictatorship. So I'm gonna put this, a new row here, dictatorship. And if anything we're saying is worth anything, you should see a lot of X's in this row, all right? And then we'll like feel good about, okay, yeah, at least these other systems are better than dictatorship, right? That's the idea here. Put a new line. I gotta lengthen these guys. The dictatorship, all right? Let's talk about majority, first of all. Does the dictatorship satisfy the majority criterion? Remember, majority means if a majority of the voters put, say, X in the top position, then X should win the election. Is that true in a dictatorship? If a majority of the people vote for one, one person, will they automatically win? The people are saying no. No, because the dictator determines who wins, and the, who the vo majority is voting for doesn't matter. So I'm going to put an X right there. I'm going to try, um, try and write down what I just said. Dictator, come on. So this one, dictatorship, does not satisfy the majority criterion. Why not? Because um, it's possible for a majority to like uh, X the best but the dictator chooses somebody else to win and then that's how the dictatorship works. That's the point of the dictatorship, really, is that sometimes you overrule the majority opinion of the people. So I'll say, but the dictator chooses someone else. All right. Um, what about the, let's just try and go across the, across the chart there. What about unanimity? Majority is not satisfied by the dictatorship. What about unanimity? Remember, unanimity means 
if all voters prefer x over y, I'll just, I'll just start writing that down. If all voters, remember we are, we are imagining that the dictator is one of the voters. Uh, so this apparently means all, all means all, right? Including the dictator. If all voters put x above y, then y should not win, right? That's the unanimity property. It doesn't mean x should win, it just means that y is not the winner. Is that true in a dictatorship? I hear them saying no. If all the voters, remember the dictator is one of the voters. Is it possible for everyone to put x above y and then y, remember the winner is determined by who the dictator put on the top of their rankings. I think actually this is satisfied by the dictatorship because the dictator is, uh, counts as one of the voters. So when you say all the voters put x above y, this includes the dictator. The dictator is ranking x above y. That means y cannot be on top of the dictator's ballot. All right. So this is a little complicated and it's kind of, you might say this is kind of a technicality because I'm considering the dictator to be one of the voters. But anyway, it does satisfy the unanimity. All right. It's because, so I will say, yes, because the dictator puts x above y, right? So that means y won't be the winner. All right, because even the dictator uh, is putting x above y. So the dictator actually it's not going to be all X's all the way across. The dictatorship still satisfies the unanimity. If you're, at, if you're arguing about your friends or with your friends about dictatorship, hey, at least it satisfies the unanimity property. It does. Um, this is sort of for, for technical reasons, you might say. Uh, what about monotonicity? Let's think about that, and then maybe that'll do us for today. Monotonicity. This means if somebody was the winner, someone was gonna win, and then you change some of somebody's vote to raise that person up, are they still going to be the winner in the dictatorship system? I see some no's. I see some also yeses. If, so let's talk about monotonicity. If uh, X was going to win, And then someone boosts X on their ballot. To me, my gut response is, uh, is no, just because it doesn't matter what anybody says on their ballot. Um, but actually, it does matter what the dictator says on their ballot. Um, you have to think about, what does this mean? If X was going to win, actually, if X was going to win, that means that the dictator chose X on the top of their ballot, right? In the dictatorship, you have to imagine if the dictator was gonna choose somebody and then somebody else changed their vote so that to raise that person up, does this actually change the uh, outcome? The answer is no, it doesn't. The, whoever the dictator was gonna choose to win, even if someone raises them up on their ballot, it doesn't matter, the dictator is still going to choose them to win. So then X still wins. That means the monotonicity also has a nice green check mark in it. The dictatorship does satisfy the monotonicity. All right, this is because the dictator will still choose X. All right, which means X still wins. So I'm gonna put a check in the box. Yeah. All right. I think that'll do.